Hello everybody, I'm Roadblock, and we are on the main account. Uh, we're going to pull some shards. So, there is this very interesting event going on, the Path of the Clover event. Um, and as you can see, I've gone down the right side. I got the key, then came down the middle, and I only need 60,000 more points in order to get um, Padrick. We're just going to go with Padrick. Now, I really like this champion a lot. Um, I think the community is a little mixed on him, if I'm honest. But I kind of wanted to talk about why I like him and kind of how he's going to fit into my Hydra team. So, Hydra is the biggest area that I'm progressing um, on the account. I'm not really building champions for... Um, Centranos. I'm not really doing much in Centranos. I'm using my keys. I'm getting as far as I can. But if I get stuck on a room, I just move on. Um, I've never even killed Amius yet. And that's by choice. I've got too much going on on the other accounts, right? So, you know, I'm going to do a little bit of playing in there um, just to get the resources going, right? Get the extra stuff. But beyond that, I'm not super... Uh, gung-ho about it so uh i'm saying that to emphasize the fact that hydra is my complete focus in the game right now my current hydra team is this now my clan just unlocked nightmare for the first time i did do a little bit but my points for hydra clash are less in nightmare than they are um in brutal so i'm sticking with brutal for now but i'm hoping the change that i'm about to talk to you guys about will improve my nightmare score and get me a little bit further so i wanted to show you my brutal team so this is my brutal team right here i've got lady kimmy in the lead i've got my best nergagante archer i've got ugo pytheon inquisitor shamel and then akrizia just doing all the heavy lifting right um what I want to do is bring Padrig in to replace Lady Kimmy. And I'll explain why in a second. And then I'm going to replace Pytheon with White Queen, which is kind of my plan. So let's talk about, first of all, all of the kits that I just mentioned. So what does Lady Kimmy do for me on my main team? On my, on my main team... Lady Kimmy is my lead. Now, her aura doesn't work. I'm very well aware of that. Please don't come at me in the comments. But what she brings for me is turn meter increase on my team and increased speed. That's what I'm looking mostly for from her. She also brings decreased speed. However, Nergigante Archer now brings that as well. I, she's been my lead for a long time. But now that I have Nergagante Archer, she brings decreased speed. Um, where'd it go? Uh, if it's a boss, right? And then she also gives turn meter to my team as well, which is very handy because we want to be taking a lot of turns, right? So, so I don't need the decreased speed part of Lady Kimmy. Lady Kimmy is there because she's getting boosted constantly as my increase speed and turn meter champion now i having only recently realized that i was double dipping and that lady kimmy may not be as viable uh well she does have this passive as well where she does gain a lot more turn meter that way as well um but the fact that i don't really need this ability anymore kind of brings up the value or kind of brings other increased speed and turn meter champions it kind of raises their value a little bit but regardless um why do i want to go oh well then let's also look at the other champion that I, i'll be replacing which is pytheon now i'm sure many of you know about this he was a fusion he's an all-around great champion he's my reviver just in case and uh my cleanser most importantly um with you know and then he does bring some extra healing but most of my healing comes from nergagante at this point so uh and then her and then her his, his her i don't know 
but uh, they're passive of damage reduction. Now, if we talk about their replacements, so first let's talk about Padraig. So we have the turn meter by 20%. This is higher than Lady Kimmy's uh, turn meter and the cleanse. So Padraig is doing what Lady Kimmy does and what Pytheon does at the same, all on one ability, which is very, very valuable. Then we have the A2. Now this is where Padraig is already better because he's bringing more. I'm, I'm gain those two champions are both in Padraig, and then I'm gaining this, which is an ally attack, which is huge, but fully restoring destroyed max HP. Right now, I'm running, um, the the uh the blessing to restore the lost max HP, and it's not keeping up fast enough across my team. Padraig fixes that while also bringing with it an ally attack um which is really really good um also bringing all these buffs i don't want to sleep on this part like he does bring the right buffs for the right champions increase attack increase defense um accuracy for 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 supports if necessary um and then a big shield if there's any uh hp champions right but here's what i really really like about him so this is a 50% chance when booked to attack one enemy and decrease the cooldown of a random ally active skill by two turns. And he's an ally attacker. So when he uses this ability, he then uses his A1. You could put some counterattack stuff in his kit. I'm not talking necessarily... Uh, gear wise, but you could put counter attack gear, but you can also get the masteries for counter attacks to go off so that you're you're reducing cooldowns of your champions. Who's a great champion to reduce their cooldowns? Acrisia. Always gotta love reducing the cooldown of Acrisia's damage dealing abilities. And Nergagante, because one if you've ever done Hydra, one thing you'll know is so extremely frustrating is when you throw out that hex and then the uh the head that you can only hit i don't know a head of torment i think the the head that you can only hit when it's under hex uh pops up and then eats a, a minion or eats a eats one of your champions and now you can't hit it to, to 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 down it and get your champion freed it can be quite frustrating uh that kind of stuff happens uh very often and it drives people drives the, those of us in hydra nuts so to reduce those cooldowns and keep those abilities churning is very, very valuable. But there's more. So one thing that I lose by switching to, to Podrick is damage reduction from Pytheon. And I would lose the revive. Now, I thought about just keeping Pytheon and just doing Podrick for lady kimmy but i had a second idea that i thought was pretty interesting with white queen so if we bring white queen and i'm going to read this or, yeah white queen and Cora. so her a1 has a 30 percent chance of decreasing the cooldown of a random ally skill by two turns she has a similar a1 to padrick who is an ally attacker, which is going to make her use her A1 more often. Um, and this can be booked up to 50% chance as well. So you have a 50-50 shot each time both of these champions attack. Again, we can build counterattack masteries and possibly counterattack gear into this kit and get a lot of this cooldown reduction going. But wait, there's more. We get another cleanse. Padraig cleanses and so does Ancora. This cleanse will remove all debuffs from all allies and places a shield buff on them equal to 25% of this champion's max HP. Now there's another champion who does something similar to this. Mithrala. It's equal to 30% of her max HP. But... Uh, that shield is really good for surviving 
the um i'm really bad with the hydra head names i'm really sorry about that guys i should put a cheat sheet on my other screen but um i want to say the head of wrath but it's the one that kind of like after 15 hits it blows up and, and basically does a big nuke to your team shield is a really great way to just take that nuke and keep on moving forward um obviously decrease attack as well but i don't really have a decrease attack champion on my roster that kind of fits with the with the the game plan of this team okay and that's kind of important to understand that I'm, I'm working within the game plan for for what i want this team to do and the whole the whole concept of this team is that padrig is in my lead and getting a bunch of turn meter from shamil whenever the the fear head is out right um but so back to this conversation we have a cleanse a second cleanse which is very valuable with a big shield which will help us live longer right and we're res we're not going to have to worry about that destroyed hp anymore because padrick will be getting rid of that and then we're also getting even more turn meter so we're getting turn meter from what three champions on the squad now right and we also get our revive back. So it is only a single target revive, which is a little bit less than what Pytheon brings. Uh, however, it does also reset the cooldown of any of their skills, which is very good. And I really suspect between this shield and all the healing that we're bringing and getting rid of the, uh, the destroyed HP, I really don't think we're going to die as much as my teams current currently do but even then i tend to really only lose one person and i'm really thinking that all the cooldown reduction from this team is they're going to be feeding off each other i do find it interesting that her cooldown reduction says accept this champion and padrigs doesn't say that which i find very very interesting and i would love to find out if he can reduce his own cooldowns or not, because that is pretty relevant to the conversation uh, when it comes to that ally attack, right? If we're getting a, if, we, I mean, if that ally attack keeps getting refreshed, we're just refreshing more cooldowns too, right? Like it's, it could really be, I think, get out of hand and be kind of strong. Um, This, I don't know how this fear portion will work with uh shamil i just don't i just don't know how it works um as far as how much turn meter he gives but at the end of the day it's it's kind of irrelevant so the passive doesn't matter as much but mostly what i care about is the cooldown reduction now the thought does cross my mind of making white queen and Cora the lead and getting this shield up a lot and and then just doing 10 percent turn meter fill uh because really we're only using these two abilities this is a revive uh but i want to generate more ability so she'll be gaining turn you know what we lose in the speed aura will gain in the greater turn meter from padrick and I, I think that's uh, that's the plan. So this is my big kind of answer to Clan Boss. Um, and I hope it works. <laughs> so I, it's, a, it's the idea that I had. And so in order to do that, I need to get Padrick. Well, what's the best way to get Padrick is to... I pull shards, unfortunately, during this event. So I need 55,000 more points, and I have tapped out entirely all of my soul stones to get to this point. I do not want to spend any addition. I don't want to spend any money um, for this purpose. So uh, one thing that I did, and I'm going to be fully transparent with you guys, is I don't know if you remember the video I had a few weeks ago where I pulled two six-star mythical uh souls they're worth uh two of the uh 
they're worth two of the eternal soul stones so i went ahead and sold those and bought some eternal soul stones and uh i'm sure that was probably a bad idea but i'm going to get a very good champion in the process and i'm kind of okay with it so um and before anyone gets too mad i also have lady makage in a six star and uh i've actually this this lady makage was the the, the fusion and then I also pulled, my only mythical I've ever pulled on this account was a Lady Mikage, who I then plus one to Lady Mikage with. So, uh, I've already pulled a mythical on this account. My chances of pulling another one are quite low. And then the chances of it being one of the two whose souls I just sold uh, is, 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 again, even lower. So, I'm okay with it. Uh, it got me the points I needed to get this far, so now we need to finish this out. Now, when I said I'm pulling shards, I didn't specify, oh, am I pulling voids, sacreds, or whatever. I'm pulling sacreds and voids. I want to be very clear. I'm not happy to be pulling voids. Uh, I really want to save my voids and keep them for future, uh, like, Narciss-type uh, guaranteed events. But I really like Padrick's kit. I really like it combined with Ancora. And the way that my team is set up just really meshes well with all of these champions kind of fighting together. So uh, that is the, the plan that I'm going to go with. And um, I also really want a Krisk. So I don't have Krisk on the account. So that is the other reason I'm pulling now. Because I have a chance to get a Krisk. So if I'm going to ever pull voids that are not going for a guaranteed legendary, I'm at least going to want to go for a legendary that I really, really want. And who knows? We might get somebody. We might get Krisk. We might get somebody better. We might not get anybody. Um, but at the end of the day, this is this is the plan that I decided to go with. So uh, I am going to put Blizzard. I have a ton of Snick tracks. I've already fused Lady Mikage, and I don't really have... On my account, a use case for Kira. Uh, but I did see that Blizzard can solo Amius, who I just talked about that I haven't killed. Uh, mostly just because I've been uh, not even really trying. But uh, Blizzard is capable of soloing him. Now, I know that other champions are also capable of soloing him that, that have a similar effect that Blizzard has. Uh, is his name Blizzard? I am literally just keep saying that. And... Uh, I'm not 100% sure that that's who this guy is. <laughs> uh, is he... What is he? What would he be? Ogren would make sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ogren. Okay. Uh, and yeah, it is Blizzard. Okay. So I'm going to start with pulling my Sacreds for Blizzard. And then we're going to go into the Voids. I just want to get the big numbers out of the way because I don't want to pull any more Voids than I have to. So here we go. Let's kick it off. Um, I do have my Mercy Tracker up as well. Let's... So that is the wrong account. Let's go to the right account. Yep. So the last time I pulled anything from Sacreds, it was during, because uh, I see Newt there. That's weird. It's counting Newt and not the uh, extra legendary that I got, which I find interesting. So. Okay. All right, anyways, uh, Newt and Duchess were the, the the last legendaries that I pulled from uh, Sacreds, so. Really cannot think, other than Ugo. If I pulled an Ugo, I'd be very happy, which, uh, you know, seems kind of crazy, but uh, I do want to have a second Ugo on this account, and uh, I... Oh my god, a legendary! <gasps> Whoa! Let's go, dude! I... Oh my god, I mean... Wow! I don't have Helicath. This is a new champion for me, and this opens up a lot of really interesting... 
value um because helicath is a beast wow okay well huh <laughs> Just to, let's just casually pull a legendary, right? Okay. Well, I'm not gonna complain about that for sure. Uh, sweet. Well, we got a Helicath. Off to a good start. The luck on this account continues to remain the same. Uh, but that's my first Helicath on here. Cool. All right. Well, I hate to just you know pull a legendary and move on, but let's do that and let's get to summoning. So right now, let's check out my point totals. Remember, our goal is to get to uh, 60,000, so we're at 23,000. So we're going to come in here, and I'm going to pull two 10 pulls. I should have space. I made a little bit of space, so I should have space. So here we go. Should be a lot of rares, probably. Again, we're pulling outside of a of a, of a a 2x, right? Um, ooh, double cold heart. I, I had an interesting question about cold heart. I'm going to do two temples here. Uh, somebody asked me, is it worth building two cold hearts? And I don't know if it is in 2024. Um, it certainly was at, at a time, but I think with hard dungeons, it may have affected her value a little bit. The fact that we're getting two pull rares is uh, quite discouraging. So maybe I just don't... Maybe my luck is only for sacreds, apparently. Um... All right, let's check my total points because I really don't want to pull any more than I have to. Yeah, that's not going up by a lot. So I, I, if I, if my math is right, I think I have to go through all of these void shards to get to the sixty. But we're at what, almost forty? Yeah. So uh, we'll pull two more ten pulls. I am getting close to mercy, but I don't think I will hit mercy. Uh, my first epic, a broad maw, of course. Okay. You know, we're looking for Krisk. Krisk would be nice, but really we're pulling for a non-void. Um, and, oh, Sk Skullcrown! I don't have her on this account, I don't think. I pulled her on my free-to-play, but that's the first time I have her on this account. And that's really interesting, because I don't have her, but I've had Sinesha. I've got multiples of Sinesha, but I never pulled a Skullcrown, so... That might be something worth playing with, um, especially for Tag Team Arena, because I do, I'm, I'm kind of stuck in the Silver 3, Silver 4 range, so it would be really nice to, uh, to move into some, some higher difficulties. Now, I'm just going to keep checking. There we go. So I think one more 10 pull should be enough. Uh... I'm just curious what my mercy is at. Yeah, my mercy is only at 112. So yeah, that's not. We're not nearly enough void shards. Uh, but I do really like Padrig, and uh, so it's 7,500. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna go one at a time here. Because I don't want to go over. I really don't want to pull any more voids than I have to. Like, I really mean that. Um, and I want to say, so it's 7,500 per. But I think I can get by with nine. Uh, so... We're going to try that. We're going to try and see if I can get uh, close without going over. So I'm going to pull one more and then check my point totals. And then we'll we'll calculate how many more that I, I need. All right. Sorry. I had a, a moment there. So... Two more. I am a little sad that I'm not going to get Krisk, though. 
Let's pull two more and check again. And then I think one more will do it. Nope, that did it. There we go. That's what we were looking for. So we have the, exactly the 60,000 points that we needed. Built up our mercy a little bit on uh, voids, which is nice. And we got Padrig. Does he just go into my champion pool? Yep. There he is. All right. So now I have a couple of projects to get to work on. Um, and I have a video to edit and release to you guys because uh, that was pretty cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments I'm, I'm very sorry for those of you that just got to watch me get uh, <laughs> a, a helicath I would have loved helicath on the free to play very very easy champion to work with in clan boss um, but uh, I'm not gonna not gonna complain and I, re I I really like Patrick's kit now I understand that it may not be like the most impressive on paper but for what I want it to do it's a direct upgrade over Lady Kimmy and the only champion I can think of that would be better in that slot than him would be uh Nekmo Thar uh mostly because of more turn meter with an extra turn then we also get the leech and the decreased speed um, and then even more turn meter by this passive, as well as also bringing decreased attack. So I do think Nekmothar is still better in that role, but Nekmothar is eluding me, and Padrig couldn't avoid me. <laughs> so, uh, he's mine, and I am very excited to get to work on, on him and, uh, and white queen who i think is le currently leveling up in here so uh i'm gonna get to work on them and move on to i hope to get them built soon and then i should release a video on them and how well they perform together in hydra hopefully i'm right we will only time will tell so keep an eye out for that video and thank you for watching this video and i look forward to seeing you in the next one bye guys